Have you ever been betrayed before? Weird question, I know, but, but but go with me. It's a strange feeling because I felt like I had by David Moyes when he left for Manchester United. I felt that way with Marwan Fellaini when, when he left for, for Manchester United. And I felt that way with Romelu Lukaku as well when he left for Manchester United. But no, because they never promised anything, did they, really? I mean, the two players I mentioned, they were signed on contracts, but players come and go all the time, you know. They 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 they, we, they paid for Fellaini. They paid for Lukaku. They could take them and say, please. Moyes was being tipped for that job since 2008. He didn't really betray us. Everyone knew it was going to happen anyway. But Carlo, Carlo, it, it feels, feels different. And I feel like I need to explain to anyone watching this who isn't an Everton fan, because I don't think you'd get the significance of what's just happened to this football club. So I'll try and explain it now as, as simply as I possibly can. When Carlo first came to us, we just come off the back of a horrific end to a Marco Silva tenure that had seen us go backwards as a football club in a lot of ways. But we all believed in Marcel Brands. We all believed that Farad Mashiri, his heart was in the right place. He was being steered by Bill Kenwright to, to appreciate the values, the values of this. Yeah. And we believed that the next appointment would be someone who believed those in those values as well. And then Carlo walks through the door, right? Freaking Carlo Ancelotti. He's won three Champions Leagues. He's one of the most successful managers in world football. Easily the most influential manager I've ever seen at my club. And he signed a four and a half year contract. And when he joined, he said all the right things. He wanted to take us into the new stadium. He wanted to build this club from the ground up. It was a project that he believed in. He believed in the project. But also we thought, because 18 months down the line, we're in the same situation again as we were after Silva and after Koeman and after Martinez and after Moyes to a similar extent, except this time, this time, what this means, forget for a second whether Carlo Ancelotti was a good manager for Everton, whether he was a bad manager for Everton, whether he succeeded or whether he failed. What this means for Everton Football Club is a potential era wasted. He was meant to build us like he did, like he did the Milan team of the early noughties. Remember them? They were quite good, weren't they? Yeah, that was going to be us in a few years' time. Nope. Nope. Florentino, show us your money. Yeah. Yeah, show us that money. And I'll hop over. I'll just hop over to, to Madrid. No second thoughts. Not even a cursory look back. Nah, just, just abandon that. Screw them. Mm -hmm. Screw all those players, those bums. They finished 10th in the Premier League anyway. Who gives a crap about Everton? I do, Carlo. I care. And that's why it hurts me. Listen, Farhad Mashiri, you, you, Farhad Mashiri's money has come into this club fairly recently. I say fairly recently. It's over half a decade now. God, we've had half a decade of this. Five different managers in that time under the reign of, I'm not going to call it terror, 
Farad's done a lot of great things. That's probably the most annoying thing about this. I agree with most of what this current management group, Farhad, Bill, Denise, um, Marcel, most of what they've done, almost all of it, in fact, and I'm sat here today on the day that Carlo has left this football club. I'm sat here doing two things. I'm preparing, I'm waiting for them to do something stupid because it's just what I've been programmed to do as an Everton fan. And to a certain extent, I'm hoping that they do something stupid because I don't think I could quite fully handle putting my entire faith into Marcel, Farhad, Bill, Denise, Sasha, the lot of them, and then they mess it up. I don't think I can do it, guys. I really don't think I can do it. Who comes in next? I've heard Eddie Howe. I've heard Nuno, Steven Gerrard. God, wouldn't that be the darkest timeline? Seriously, seriously, if they did hire Steven Gerrard, I would quit being an Evan fan that day. And I think you'd see about two and a half million people do exactly the same thing. I don't think it would happen. It it won't happen. I've spent most of today, after reading that shite in The Athletic, telling myself that they won't do that and that won't happen, and then... <laughs> And then telling myself I wouldn't cry if that happened. Crying. 23 years old. Literal tears, right? <sighs> hmm. Budweiser, by the way. Underneath. King of beers. King. King. Like Josh. Josh King. Yeah. Can't wait for Eddie Howe to sign him for a four-year contract. Hmm. Would I take Moyes? Would I take Moyes? I mean, he's done well with West Ham. It's a hearkening back to my childhood, but it's also a backward step of about 11 years. No thanks. Nuno? Just got sacked by Wolves? No? He did all right, I guess. Eddie Howe? No... No, no. See, this is the problem now that Everton have put themselves in. They've just managed to lose one of the best managers in the world, in the world. And I stand by that. Every other name that's been linked to this job, with the possible exception of Antonio Conte, is a massive step down. And that's where we have put ourselves. This is this is partially our fault that we've let this happen, by the way. Because I don't think that Carlo does this if we are where we were meant to be. And that's in Europe. I think Europe was hugely important for us, and we've blown that chance with Carlo Ancelotti. And we're going to have another summer where... We don't know what direction we're going to go in. We don't know what the plan is. We don't know where the club is going to be three years, four years from now. And anyone who does come in is probably going to do the same thing that Carlo has just done. If they have any decent success. I mean, geez, dark timelines, eh? It's bleak. It's really bleak. And you look at the squad. The squad have put Carlo in this position in a lot of ways. With their performances towards the end of the season, they haven't been good enough. And the peace I felt at the end of the season as well, when we got thumped 5-0 by Manchester City, it was, it was weird, wasn't it? Because previous seasons, you know... When we finished the season with Allardyce, I was thinking, oh, you know, we just need to get a decent manager here and we'll be all right. You know, the end of Silver's tenure, I go, oh, if only we could have signed Kurt Zuma. 
you know that that was that was hard and we had a lot of injuries you know the end of Carlo's first half season we were looking good there if only Covid hadn't happened bloody Covid if only that hadn't happened we'd have had a good end to the season this time the peace I felt after that Man City game was oh they're just not good enough they're just not good enough and I'm looking at the squad now and there's tons of players in there that I used to really stick by, you know. And now I look at them. Pickford can go if we get a replacement. Coleman's lost his legs. Give him a coaching job, but he can go. Michael Keane can go if there's a deal. Yeah, Mina can go. I like Ben Godfrey. I'd be sad if he went. I like Luca Dean. I'd be sad if he went. Is Decore going to be here two years from now? Probably not. Is Rodriguez going to stick around? Definitely not. <laughs> he ain't sticking around. Imagine how James Rodriguez feels, by the way. <laughs> he only joined because of Carlo. <laughs> and now his favourite manager's bugging up back off to Madrid, where James just came from. I, re- I reckon you know. I reckon Carlo is going back on the plane uh, to Real Madrid. And then James is just sort of clinging onto the wheel like this, like, take me with you! Please, take me with you! Please, get me out of this shit hole! Hmm. Richie ain't going to stick around, if he knows what's best for his career. Even someone like Calvert Lewin, who I would have said before this was Everton through and through. He might not. You know, if a decent offer comes in for him. You know, if if Chelsea decide that he's the centre forward of their future. You know, if if United strike out on Harry Kane, if they can't get Harry Kane or Haaland, he'd fit right in there, wouldn't he? God, he'd fit in there. If Spurs need a replacement even for Harry Kane, if Kane were to go, you know, there's a spot there for him, isn't there? You you can see him so many other places other than us. Ah. So next season, um, when Tom Davis will be Everton captain, um, we'll be playing Josh King up front, Every single week, when we've seen what he's like, he gasses out after about five minutes. So if he doesn't score in those five minutes, we're basically screwed, aren't we? Can't wait to see Alex Awobi get subbed off after 70 minutes for Bernard. 38 games in a row. <sighs> Honestly, give it, give it dunk. Give it dunk. At least he might stick around for a bit, you know? So, yeah, I think that's it. Was this good? I don't know. Hit like if it was. I might do it again. Who knows? Give it dunk. <laughs>